thank you for joining us for this session. Um, we, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> so we are going to talk about uh, reliable news and uh, fake news. Um, we are happy to to be here at uh, uh, Buzzwords. We are happy to have this uh, audience. Um, just to two seconds to, uh, to introduce ourselves. So, me, I'm Radu Pop, Solution Architect at uh, Adlin. Yeah, and I'm uh, Benjamin De Visa. I am Software Developer at Adlin also. And uh, this is our team. Um, we are uh, search enthusiasts, uh, integrators of uh, Elasticsearch, uh, OpenSearch, and uh, Solar. Um, we um, offer um, consulting and training uh, services. Um, we are also developing um, enterprise search solution for e-commerce, which is called uh, A2. And uh, we also uh, de develop um, collaborative uh, search engine. Our collaborative search engine, but hopefully your uh, collaborative search engine as well, which is called all.site. Um, this is us uh, last year in uh, in Berlin, and we are very happy to uh, be able to be back uh, um, for this uh, session of, uh, of the event. Um, so um, we will have a short talk. I think it will be uh, less technical than uh, the talk that uh, we we have seen so far today. But um, let's uh, let us walk you through uh, a story about. Uh, uh, reliable news and uh, fake news. So, the introduction, let's start with some examples. Yeah, we are going to start with some proven fake news that were spread over, all over time. So, for instance, one of the first f fake news we can hear nowadays is flat earth. But if you go back in time, you can see that Aristotle observed that the earth. Sorry. Uh, we have a, an issue with the window. Mr. Photographer, please. Sorry. You? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Sorry. So you, you can source everything with the QR code in, um, on this. Every source is uh, available. So Aristotle observed that the Earth's shadow on the moon during an eclipse was spherical and deducted that the Earth wasn't flat. Another one is the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It was written in the early uh, 20th century in Russia. And its only goal was to be um, aggressive toward Jewish people. And it took about 18 years to, to debunk it by the New York Times in 1921. A more recent one is uh, what the tobacco industry did in America. They bought scientists to prove that cigarette wasn't uh, dangerous for your health. But in 1994, 46 states filled a lawsuit against the tobacco industry because of the fake news spreading. So there are all kinds of fake news. Uh, there is a law called Brandolini's law, known as the bullshit asymmetry principle. It states that the amount of energy needed to reduce, to refute bullshit in order to, as an order of magnitude is bigger than the, the one needed to produce it. It, it takes me five seconds to give a fake news. It will take hours to debunk it. Yeah, so th this is one of the starting points that uh, Benjamin and I, we had uh, when uh, we were thinking uh, about our talk and um, uh, how to present this uh, uh, debate in between uh, reliable news and uh, fake news. But then having a second thought, I was thinking, uh, but this is not recent. This is a very old uh, story. Um, and I was trying to find some references. Uh, it turns out that uh, it's very... Uh, it's a modern adaptation, transposition of a very old aphorism, which clearly states that a fool may throw a stone in the well, which a hundred wise men cannot pull out. Um, and um, this uh, is, it comes from, um, um, from the weakness of, uh, of the community, of uh, humankind. Um, it was um, 
at some point it uh, was published and uh, printed by uh, George Herbert, um, a po uh, an English poet and uh, orator in uh, the University of Cambridge. So we have the, the proof that um, in the seventh century, in 1652, uh, we have a trace of uh, this uh, aphorism. And um, this is interesting because um, um, we, we might uh, wonder, um, is it still, um, um, it, does it still apply in, in our days? And uh, the, the story of uh, fake news uh, clearly shows that we are repeating the story. It's uh, exactly the same thing. But let's think a bit, um, why, uh, why does it still happen? What's the incentive of uh, this, uh, this debate? Um, and we are not thinking and we are not interpreting um, the fool as a pejorative uh, interpretation. Um, we could in identify several in incentive. Um, incentive. Um, as the science is uh, more and more evolved, and uh, if we take the example of computer science, we have so many specific domains, uh, more and more narrow. Um, we kind of lack of experience in specific domains. We cannot master all the domains uh, possible uh, and all the specific, um, um, specific fields in, in a certain domain. Um, a while ago, maybe this could, uh, could apply, but nowadays we really need uh, experts and we need a specific community uh, to address uh, specific debates. Um, a second possibility to interpret that is that um, uh, spreading fake news could be uh, uh, accidentally. So you just take a piece of information from some of your friends, you distribute it uh, farther on, um, not intentionally, but maybe it turns out that it's not true. Um, it could be also even worse. It could be intentionally um, a vicious, uh, used in a vicious purpose. Um, and the last point, and maybe the most interesting, is that the facility to disseminate uh, news nowadays is much more important. Um, basically, using social media, um, it's very easy. Basically speaking, it's very easy to throw a stone. Everyone can throw a stone. Now, what's, what is the target? Um, the target uh, and who who should be uh, concerned about uh, uh, clarifying and finding the truth? I think it should be us. It should be uh, experts, uh, scientific reference in different domains. But in a broader extent, it should be the community. Different communities uh, should work together and should fight for um, revealing the truth. So this is where we find ourselves in the position of the 100 wise men. All of us should be wise and should be able to distinguish from uh, good and fake. So, um, there, is, um, um, there is an important aspect that I, want, I wanted to uh, stress out is that uh, beyond different signification of characters that I mentioned in, in this aphorism, uh, there is a time dimension that is very important in uh, the dissemination of data. So, and I would say an antithetical time dimension because in, on one side, the fake news, they spread very, very quickly. And this is a wink to our um, conference organizers. It's a buzz. It's a buzz effect. It's very easy to uh, spread some information, uh, especially uh, much accelerated by social media. And on the other end, uh, you have the refutation press process, which is very complicated and it takes uh, much longer. And why? Because it requires expertise. Not anyone can have this expertise. So it requires deep analysis. It requires experiments. You have to prove the, that your conclusion is correct. So uh, afterward, afterwards, it requires also dissemination. So all this process, it's, it's very long, much longer than uh, uh, disseminating and propagating some simple news. 
So um, still, the question is, why, why does it take so long? Um, and the conclusion that we are coming across is uh, probably it's a lack of uh, critical thinking. Um, probably you are familiar with um, the, um, the measuring of the, the measure of dwell time, which this is something that we can measure. We can uh, approximate the, the amount of time that uh, a reader uh, spends on a certain page or a website. Um, some recent uh, studies showed up that uh, around 55 seconds are, in average, uh, are spent by uh, a, a user, an online uh, reader. Um, I'm not even mentioning all the other um, social media like Instagram, um, YouTube, uh, TikTok, you name it. Uh, this dwell time is even drastically uh, reduced, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. So, um, considering that uh, we, are, we have the tendency to spend less and less time in reading and understanding uh, and analyzing all, all the information, um, this uh, takes us to uh, dedicate a very sh a short amount of time to thinking on, on our side. I found a very interesting illustration of, uh, of the concept of thinking, which is, again, not something uh, recent. It comes from the prehistory and Neolithic cultures in uh, more than uh, 7,000 years ago. So people uh, used to, to think uh, at that time, so why not, uh, we should not uh, continue and have uh, ask ourselves and question ourselves. Um, this having said, um, we, uh, we identified three points um, that would be necessary for striving for reliable news. Uh, first of all, uh, it's very important to uh, carefully select your sources. Um, solid references, um, trustworthy uh, sources, so uh, probably um, guided by com community intelligence, we can uh, identify uh, the sources that will are more likely to produce uh, and to inform us correctly. The second point, uh, as I was talking about the, the lack of time and things going faster and faster nowadays, nowadays um, we can uh, delegate this, uh, this task of uh, searching uh, to specialized tools, dedicated search engines, so that the information is processed faster and we, have, we need less time to, to go and look for it. And then uh, the last but not the least, um, and this is where big data uh, comes into play, um, is the, the fact that uh, more data you use for your information and for your analysis, more likely is that you would have, uh, uh, you'll get the truth. The, the truth will emerge um, from this, from this, this data. Uh, and this is something that uh, we based this uh, belief on uh, uh, the probability theory of uh, large numbers. So just to wrap up and conclude on this, uh, three, this methodology, we were thinking about um, a virtual circle with uh, these uh, three S, three actions, uh, for, that we should iterate in several loops until we, uh, we, emerge the, we make emerging the, the truth. So select the sources, uh, search, and then think. Yeah, as we were talking about lack of time, we are going to speed up because we are running out of time. So uh, we are going to go through some BEAS where you can find on your, on your way. There are cognitive BEAS. This is a pattern that will prevent you from thinking rationally. Some example is the attentional BEAS. You are affected by selective factors in the attention, for instance, if I ask you which, what, which is the color of the world, some of you will say it's red, but it's written in blue. This is called the Stroop paradigm. This is strongly prominent in uh, addictive behavior. There is also anchoring. This is that the first impression will alter your perception. For ads, this smartphone is not expensive because it's only 999. It's not 1,000, so it's not expensive. Or 
This is a discount. No matter the price, if you see 20% discount, so you think it's not expensive. There is also the escalation of commitment when the negative outcomes from the decision are increasing, you keep going. The most uh, important proof of that is the Vietnam War. It was going bad for the US, but they kept going. More uh, current for us, the music festival is horrible, it rains, I lost my shoes, but I will stay there for three days because I paid for it. Escalation of commitment. The Dunning-Kruger effect was uh, very well uh, represented on um, TV sets nowadays because people with low ability overestimate this ability and people with high ability underestimate their skills. For example, I'm a political journalist, so I will explain why COVID is just a flu. But I'm a political journalist. I know what I'm doing. The confirmation bias you search information that confirm your own beliefs. On Twitter, I follow only people who think like me. My opinion is a good one because on Twitter, I only see people thinking like me. So you are in an in inner circle that confirms everything you think. Cognitive dissonance. Every contradiction is a stress. So you will fight it. I will prove that the Earth is flat with an experiment. My experiment shows that the Earth is not flat. I did my experiment wrong. This is from a documentary. It was a, tr a true case I saw. Thank you. So how can, you fight, can we fight it? Well, many, many technologies available. You can use chatbots, NLP and LLM to grant access to a larger part of the population your grandma does not know how to use Google. But if you explain her that Alexa or Google Home can answer a simple question just by asking it, maybe she will have access to more information. Open data is a source of everything. You can access the data and we can, you can analyze it. And you can use image comparison, video analysis to detect uh, deep fakes or stuff like that. One example, in France, during the pandemic, we had someone uh, who created a website called COVID Tracker. He was a young engineer out of school and created this tool only from open data and everyone used it to understand the pandemic, even in the hospital it was used, so he got a medal from the president for that. But it was an individual, or a small team of person. From that, it was open data and open source. So, search engines can help. So you, are, you have many search engines, open search, elastic search, solar. At Adeline, we have one of our own, all that site, which is a collaborative, collaborative search engine. So, maybe it can enhance the experience because you can have better, better sources with uh, stuff like that. So, I was a little hurry, in a hurry to finish just in time. So thank you. Remember, there are many ways to contribute, and maybe we can uh, make a better world. Thank you. <laughs>